We're talking about Oracle reports to Jasper reports. We share some experience about do's and don'ts from reports migration projects. So be assured that this will be a great webinar filled with great content. Like always, we do have some excellent speakers lined up and I'm really happy that all of you can join the session. So talking about org reports to Jasper reports, why is this webinar important? Uh, it's really interesting uh, that this is a topic that has gained a quite bit of attention over the past weeks, months, especially since Oracle has announced that reports is end of life. So there's a topic on many people's mind, what to do with uh, Oracle reports, with my Oracle reports, especially that my organization relies heavily on. So it doesn't make sense until you are forced to do something to move forward. You should always have a strategy in place for your mission critical legacy applications. And uh, well, in the past webinars, events and sessions that we have polled multiple hundreds of attendees. And in general, we see that 60% of those attendees have already decided to move away from Oracle reports. Well, Pitts has evaluated multiple options in the past, such as Jasper reports and for a potential replacement of Oracle reports, we support ideal these migrations with our tool-based migration and modernization approach. And we did in a lot of projects in the past. So today we will share our project and modernization experience about Jasper reports. We will demonstrate how to ease a migration from Oracle reports to Jasper as this is an excellent target state option in terms of replacing Oracle reports. That said, uh, well, we have prepared a great team for you today. We have lined up a couple of speakers, uh, such as Stefan, uh, my uh, dear colleague, uh, heading up business development at Pitts. And uh, he will support it also by Adnan, Adnan Asim, a senior consultant, project manager, with a long experience with Pitts joining, uh, working and cooperating with us. Uh, since more than 10 years, running huge projects, supporting uh, long-term customers. Uh, and uh, well, Adnan, experienced, he always finds a solution to every problem he has to face. And also Peter, Peter Kopach, a senior consultant. Uh, Peter is a long-standing and a pro in customer projects. He's focused on Oracle database, forms reports, APEX, and... Uh, Jasper, and he's also a uh, group has to trainer all of these topics and uh, yeah, very familiar with all customer requirements. Really look forward to our session here today. Well, myself, Sasha Sander, it's a pleasure for me to moderate, take you through a quick tour through today's session. And uh, well, gentlemen, you're really looking great here. Uh, and I trust that you can hear me well. It's great that you're with us. Hello, thanks very much, Sasha. I'm... Hi, hi, Sasha. Hi, hi, Sasha. I can hear Thank you. you. Thank the you. End. So we have prepared a couple of things for uh, all of you out there today. Uh, what are we talking about the next uh, 40 minutes, Prox? So uh, in this webcast, you will benefit, first of all, from our experts. Our experts who will share their experience from multiple Oracle reports to Jasper reports migration projects. Uh, of our customers from a wide range of industries, such as manufacturers, logistics companies, finance, insurance companies, software provider, and much, much more. So you will learn about Jasper reports uh, as a more modern reporting solution that is Java-based, first of all, that is modern, that is an open technology, that's future-oriented. And a nice thing, after we shared in a discussion some of the questions, some of the pitfalls not to fall in, uh, just of, uh, some of our experience in, in projects that we have realized. Uh, we will also have a session, a part of today's session talking about a live migration uh, of a couple of Oracle reports. Uh, some of you uh, took the opportunity in the forum to provide uh, their report. 
Uh, and uh, well, we have prepared this kind of, of migration. We took these reports and we will demonstrate how easy and how fast we can modernize, we can migrate org reports uh, based on our tool-based approach. Uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, you can place your question during the session. You will have the possibility to use the chat box uh, at the top of the screen or feel free to place your questions here. Uh, if there are any questions arising during the session, please feel free, place it here. We will answer and we'll discuss. Uh, we will have time and take this time today, no problem. So before I hand over to my colleagues starting their interesting sessions, uh, a quick view, uh, just to summarize up, I'm pretty sure that most of you know PITS already in the past as we are around since more than 22 years here in the market. We are working globally. We are working globally direct here from our headquarter in Germany, uh, where we have uh, two locations uh, targeting the UK market out of London, and uh, well, since 2007 already in the Americas with Pitts LLC out of Troy, Michigan. So we are a truly global company. Uh, we cooperate also in various regions with certified Pitts partners. Uh, so as we work globally, you can count our senior resource that can help you out in your native tongue. On top of that, our huge expertise around and ahead Oracle we are doing very exciting projects. We're doing legacy modernization from forms and reports to different technologies such as Apex, different Java frameworks, and of course, reports modernization to Jasper, all tailored to your, your needs, your customer needs, helping our clients modernizing their mission critical applications. Just a quick intro from my side. And uh, well, like always, uh, before I hand over to Stefan and Adnan, I appreciate your support. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity for a quick poll because it's always interesting to know and let you know what your guys are using out there. And uh, if I can share this uh, initial poll, asking how many reports you currently have, appreciate if you can give us a quick feedback on that. Tick the box, quite easy. I keep it open for a couple of seconds. It would be great, appreciate your answer. And I will display in a few seconds so that you can see the answers and uh, see how reports are running in a matter of size here. So three more seconds. Three, two, one. Thank you very much. And let's have a quick look and uh, see what's out there. So uh, most of you are running uh, reports in the size up to 500. So it's around 60%. So this is what we see in general in the market when we have a global view on that. So there are nearly 20% between 500 and 1,000, but also more than 20%, more than 1,000 reports in their environment. So you see that is a very hot topic, very interesting, very important topic. And uh, well, it's time to think about that, think about the future and uh, we will see, we will share some of our experience here and uh, we will stop it here. And as from this, we will move forward on the next step, along with me, bear with me. These two nice guys here. So Stefan, uh, I'd like to hand over to you. Hmm, wonderful, stage. thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, bear with me. I stopped my screen and uh, your stage, gentlemen. Thanks very much. So let me share my screen. These empty desktop I start with before I start my presentation. Uh, so we are ready to run. Um, before we uh, step into an interview together with uh, Adnan, I'd like to give you some, some thoughts about uh, reports migration projects, uh, how they are running, what are the uh, obstacles with the highs and lows 
uh, to see um, what, what is really the difference between a migration project and a real from scratch starting uh, implementation of such reports. Um, so the, the starting point, uh, and that is what Sasha mentioned before, is uh, still valid. It's uh, the statement of direction from uh, reports uh, from Oracle. Uh, we take that from the website you see on the slide, and it's the, still the, the valid information. We just prove that more or less day by day. Um, the release 12213 is the last release from Oracle reports with uh, the uh, Oracle Fusion middleware. Reports itself is part of uh, the release 12214, um, but um, there are no, no uh, future enhancement and, and uh, development uh, scheduled on site of Oracle. And more or less, you could just quick check that if you use the website, there's a brilliant documentation for the Fusion middleware components. If you start with the, uh, uh, breadcrumb you see on top for the developer tools forms and you go to the 12214 page you will find a brilliant documentation from oracle forms uh, with all these new features coming up or is are part of uh, the uh, latest release and there is a, a chapter for <clears throat> working with oracle reports on that page for the documentation but this page is still, after years, redirected to the 12.2.1.3 release. So there is, per definition, no change, no changes, no enhancement, no no future development for Oracle reports, and the support uh, is uh, is just given with a couple of end dates uh, for uh, these different levels. So there's reason enough to take care about the future of your Oracle reports. By the way, I'm, from my personal perspective, like uh, the way if we uh, have some good reasons to go ahead and we are not forced to move to another solution. So as Sasha said, we just run around and take some uh, views on different solutions. And the first came up is truly from Oracle, <clears throat> sorry, it's Oracle reports, um, I'm sorry, Oracle BI Publisher. So we are um, covering the BI Publisher from his very, very early stage and, and just uh, support customers on their way to BI Publisher. But we found that this tool is really different if you take a look at the from the developer perspective. If you, and that is what Oracle Reports is built with, with the heart and knowledge of the developers. And um, if they are forced to use BI Publisher, that is really an obstacle that you, you are more or less lost. But the Jasper Reports provide a very, very good solution. Um, it's, it's just developed with uh, regular patches, uh, feature enhancements, and have a very, very large community where you could get help from, uh, where you can get support so that you are in, in a good house for developing your Oracle reports. Reporting itself is in between in the past, getting more and more an infrastructure service. The Forms application is not the only application who's ask for creating a couple of PDF documents, analytics, uh, uh, results, etc. So you have applications roundabout, they are all using different kind of report services. So with the Jasper, you are Java based, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's very, very near bound to uh, BI capabilities. So that's a good reason to start with this. From the very first decision from our point to um, take Jasper as a target architecture for the migration, we try to <clears throat> create a very good relationship and, and we just partner from, from TIPCO, JasperSoft, um, and we follow and try to follow best practices if we migrate into uh, the Jasper reports solution. Um, <clears throat> this feature list is not given by TIPCO itself. It's copied from uh, uh, a web page where the company comparing around about 30 to 40 different report solutions. And that are the, the key features they figure out for TIPCO. The most I like, and that's the reason why we could 
enhance the Oracle reports landscape is the possibility to use sub reports and in inheritance. Uh, within Oracle reports, there is no inheritance concepts. You could extract SQL statements into queries, which are given by files, but that is rarely, rarely used. Um, it's much more easier to use um, sub reports and, and uh, library concepts uh, and style sheets uh, in JasperSoft on Jasper reports. And that's the reason uh, why we really see a benefit from in the migration rather than in a simple replacement. With all, <clears throat> with all this, we uh, create very, very, and very, very early stage with our first migrations, a common document together with TIPCO. It's, uh, it's a white paper uh, you could uh, access from our website and, and ask uh, for, for downloading uh, where all these steps are documented from uh, our side and even from uh, TIPCO side. Uh, what should be necessary tasks and steps and, and uh, parts you should cover when you go from Oracle reports um, to Jasper reports. As I said in the beginning, uh, a migration from an existing software to a new technology is not in the same as you start from scratch and start building a new, completely new solution. There are some, some different um, concepts necessary to cover all these things. And we improve our process project by project. We improve our tool project by project. And uh, we figure out that this uh, phase approach for our modernization is a very, very good starting point or a very good uh, blueprint for running these kind of projects. So we start with an analyze because the number of reports we saw in, that we, we figure out customers with a different range of reports is not a valid metric if you are try to cover the effort or the complexity uh, of your migration project because the real obstacles are inside the reports. So there are some patterns which do not directly fit into the target technology. In reports, you may have DML statements inside a, a very special trigger. You, you write a text IO beside creating a PDF document. That is more of interest rather than the numbers of reports you present. So we analyze very, very deeply due to property level of a frame, due to uh, used packages inside your triggers. And after that, we have a very, very good clear project plan what what is uh, coming up and what are the tasks of our migration project the second bubble uh, shows you the cleaning phase so uh, cleaning in reports is not so much but we take care about redundancy as reports do not provide something like inheritance of format trigger or inheritance of units or real good inheritance of frame and sql uh, we identify duplicates you have inside your existing landscape and extract them into the appropriate artifacts for Jasper reports. So you improve the maintainability during the migration because you have only one part for perhaps an address frame or an, a repeating frame for a couple of items or something like this. So that is a very, very interesting part. And that is also used for elements from the user interface. So we identify styles and you could use um, for uh, Jasper if you have the same repeating settings of exceptions in Oracle reports due to format triggers. The third bubble is a very important bubble. It's a business logic to database. So if you have extensible or they're very extensive functions and program units written in Oracle reports. It makes sense to uh, take them over into the new architecture and put them into the database to make them reusable in a query or in a JDBC connect from Jasper to the database. So we have to not to rewrite them or migrate them into an another language. Uh, that is a very, very big part. And that's the reason um, because Jasper provide a couple of different um, reusability artifacts. The first bubble in the migration phase, it's the discussion about the architecture. And uh, 
within this, we try to improve um, your your existing reports by taking care about special header and footer for the layout, by uh, taking care about um, uh, CI designs for your company, by advising you what are the best reuse for sub reports. You do not have to review the reports with your eyes on, on a couple of repeating frames because we have very, very cool algorithms to identify possible candidates for these kind of sub reports. So that is uh, what we do in the architecture phase. Um, <clears throat> for the migration itself, it's you will see that later in the live demo from, from Peter, how we do the mi migration with our tool and what is the result. After you get the result, there are two or three bubbles necessary for fine tuning the reports in the output. Um, you have to refine some arrangements of fields. Sometimes uh, you have extendable frames or shrinking able frames in report that may run differ, different in Jasper. So you have to adjust these uh, in, in very small pa uh, places. And you may refine your business logic, that is your functions and format triggers, which do not uh, which are not migrated to the database, which are transformed into scriptlets, and you may adjust them afterwards. But due to the fact that we have a very, very good analyze in the beginning, we already know what are the specific tasks inside these green bubbles. So we can create a, a to-do list or uh, more or less like a cookbook you could run through to finalize your reports. This cookbook or to-do list is even uh, able to export to Jira or Trello or whatever um, backtracking tool you use so that you could follow uh, this task during your uh, project. Last but not least, uh, you may have some UI enhancements. Jasper provide a couple of very cool graphs and, and styles you could reuse on the same query. So perhaps you may extend your reporting with a couple of new functionalities, but that is up on you. That is not covered by, by a kind of migration. Last but not least, and that is what we see later on, <clears throat> we support testing inside um, uh, this migration project um, because it's very, time consuming if you have to run the reports and the Jasper reports every time one by one after the other. So, but that is a topic, or a topic for, for the later discussion with Adnan. So that is what we figure out during our mass numbers of projects for reports to Jasper. And it's a very, very helpful blueprint to run through a migration. Next step, I'd like to introduce uh, Adnan. And uh, Adnan is uh, just, as uh, Sasha mentioned, a, a very experienced project leader uh, uh, within Pitt's family. And he's working with us for more than 10, 10 years in, in very big projects. And he's um, actually right now, I believe he's, he's bound to a um, migration project for Jasper reports uh, for very, very big global acting customer located over here in Germany. Um, hi, Adnan, are you with us? Hi, Stefan, hi, yes. <clears throat> uh, wonderful. I, I appreciate the time you, you could spend for us uh, during your very heavy project load. Uh, so it's, it's good to see and, and it's good to know that we have the possibility to run through the questions which are given by uh, to us from the audience with the, um, uh, with the uh, login to these webcasts. Um, first of all, what is your experience? Uh, what are the reasons for the customer when they choose Jasper reports as the successor for uh, Oracle reports? Okay, um, uh, Jasper reports is a Java based reporting tool and most of our customers are familiar with the Java. Uh, it's an open source solution and very easy to learn and use. It's integrated development environment allows the freedom of development and it provides a lot of different report components, which makes the whole development process very easy. Mm -hmm. More it allows to read the data from different multiple data sources and also support multiple output formats like mm -hmm. PDF, RTF, CSV and many more. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of good features available in Jasper reports. Oh, wonderful, cool. On the other hand, what are the biggest concerns from the customer if they are asking to migrate away from Oracle reports? 
the biggest concern used to be the project budgets, like how much it could cost, time frames, like how long it could take to migrate the reports, uh, about the capabilities of the Jasper reports, like how good is the Jasper, and some customers have concern how much is future proof is Jasper mm -hmm. reports, like uh, how long it will be available and supported. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any any answers for the customer? Or what are the the parts you advise to the customer for this? Uh, y yes, like we we we, we highlight that uh, that you can with the with your with migrating the reports to Jasper, you can bring your reports uh, and enhance your reports to the mm. next level of reporting. Mm. So and this this attracts our customers a lot. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. Um, we saw that the customer have different size of or numbers of reports. Uh, from your experience, what are the typical project size you are dealing with? It varies. We we see and manage quite different project size. Um, as Oracle reports, similar to the Oracle forms, has a long history. Mm. Uh, we see grown application with 2,000 plus reports, but also an application with 40 to 50 reports. Mm. So, but an, at, at an average, customer use uh, reports within range of uh, 300 to 600 reports. Mm. But for a tool-based approach for a migration, uh, there is no limit in the number of yeah. reports. Yeah. The more important are that the numbers of uh, numbers are to identify mm. the complexities and to overcome the complexities within these reports. Mm. That is what we saw from our uh, project phase, that we start with these kind of uh, analysis uh, to identify the complexity inside and to gain some, some kind of confidence for the customer uh, for the complete project. Uh, what are the re uh, reactions uh, from your customers if you're presenting such kind of analysis? Uh, analysis? So when we present the analysis uh, to our customer at first, they astonish that how quickly and how deeply we can analyze the Oracle reports. Then they see it as a chance to improve all these uh, reports together with us. And then at the end, they are very happy to see that that lot of implementation and business logics fits very well into the Jasper architecture. Mm. Okay, fine. Uh, I believe every question came up from the customer is, uh, what is a typical conversion rate? So what, what could we migrate? Um, what do you see in your analyze, analysis? So at an average, the conversion rate is 70%, uh, mm. but we do calculate the conversion rate for each and every report. Yeah. Okay, so, so you get the result at the end on report level. So you could see which report has a higher conversion rate and which has a lower conversion rate? Yes, exactly. We do this calculation for each and every report and, ah, and cool. have these numbers for each and every report, yeah. Okay, so the customer get these results and could run through his reports and to see what is valid to migrate and what are the time savings he, he could earn. Yes, exactly, exactly. Oh, cool, wonderful. Um, when, you, when you ask to start such kind of project, how do you, you start into these migration projects? So normally we, we start with the training. <laughs> we okay. give our customers a uh, training. Uh, we support our customers with the training on the job. We run the first clusters uh, together with our customers and afterwards they are fit enough, uh, trained enough to run uh, other clusters by on their own. Mm -hmm. And for the some customers we do, and they like us to do the full migration. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. so, so you talk about cluster, you, well, could you, you split down the reports to smaller groups or what is yes we, we split the reports into the smaller subsets uh, mm -hmm. and uh, based on the similarities of the reports based on the application modules in our customers application and and we split mm -hmm. them we we do this agreement together with our customers and then mm -hmm. we do the migration cluster wise okay well you, you talk about that you involve the customer in the beginning uh, how exactly is this involvement so after doing all the preparations and after doing all the cluster, all the clustering, we we advise an architecture of Jasper reports to our customer. We identify the common components. We define some design principle in the Jasper reports. Mm -hmm. If all these steps are done and everything is set up, and customer having the basic training uh, it could immediately start with uh, migrating the simple reports in the beginning, mm -hmm. and afterwards with with more complex reports. Uh, as I already said that we do cluster the reports based on the complexity in the data model so that uh, we also make sure that all the similar reports are covered by the same, same developers. Ah, cool. And, and uh, um, you, you talk about the, the, that is uh, the customer could influence the design principle. He's, he's part of this decision team. 
Yes, we involve hmm. the customers to do hmm. this uh, in the preparation phase, and that's very important. Oh, okay, wonderful. Uh, but at the end, you are responsible for the project itself. So, what are your tips and and daily works for managing these kind of migration? projects so we manage the projects uh, by using jira uh, mm -hmm. we document each and everything uh, for each and every report we create a jira tickets and for each report we do a documentation in a form of excel sheet where we list all the all the uh, all the information relevant for the migration mm -hmm. we list all the things which got migrated automatically what are the open issues what are the use mm -hmm. formats uh, so then uh, with this actual sheet we we, doc, we integrate this actual sheet into the jira mm -hmm. and accordingly we create sprints and the burn down charts mm -hmm. and and i understood right that all these things are generated by our migration tool so there's no need to copy and paste something into an excel no we use a tool uh, we do a yeah. tool based migration and uh, we we get the log out of our tool as well oh, and where cool. everything okay. is listed and then uh, then we use this as a next step to migrate uh, mm. the remaining things yeah mm. at the end uh, there is the reason or the necessity to even testing all these reports uh, what is your advice or how could you support these testing of the reports so yes uh, to bring the speed in the testing uh, we, we 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 do automated testing uh, mm -hmm. we automate the unit testing of old okay. oracle reports and the new jasper reports and then we coordinate the test runs with our customer based on different set of parameters and values we rerun our test uh, test test cases on a regular basis and then we compare at the end a pdf output documents that how they ah, look cool. like yeah cool wonderful that will save a lot of time i believe exactly yeah yeah okay wonderful so reports itself is not a uh, standalone software most of them are integrated in in just oracle forms or in, in batch modes or something like this well, what are the consequences of these kind of migration if i migrate from reports to jasper there are different possibilities for for integration of jasper reports in in the connected system uh, for example we could integrate jasper reports via via web service into the oracle forms uh, application and for the bad jobs uh, we could simply create a java class and run the jasper reports from anywhere ah wonderful and and all the changes required to be done in uh, in, uh, in oracle forms application that can be managed uh, through our tool pitscon very easily okay. Wonderful, great. Adnan, many, many thanks for all your answers. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, are there any giveaways for the audience? Yes, um, I would say that the first step for the migration is to start with the analysis. And I would suggest our audience that don't lose time and start soon with the analysis. And we can support you fully in all the ways. Okay, thank you, Adnan, and good yeah, luck you in your project. Thank you, thank you, Stefan. Okay. Before I hand over to uh, Peter for live demo so that you could see whatever we are talking about, I'd like to hand over or just give back the control to Sasha. Uh, Sasha, are you yeah. still with us? Yeah, for sure. I listen Wonderful. very closely to your presentation. <laughs> okay. Stop my sharing and yeah. the screen is yours. Thank you very much. So you should see my screen again and you two yep. brilliant guys here again. So thanks also from my side, Adnan and, and, and Stefan, so for your great presentation. Uh, so it, it's really emphasizing and, and sharing our experience in, in these great uh, projects uh, and complex projects even that Adnan supports and at least our team are supporting here and, and show the capabilities how to ease uh, Oracle reports migration. Just uh, before I hand over to uh, the next interesting session with uh, Peter, uh, I would like uh, to take another chance, uh, all to all attendees, please share uh, uh, a quick uh, second poll that we have prepared here, just to give us some feedback, if you have any plans to migrate, uh, do you already have a time plan for? Uh, just give us a quick feedback. So probably you plan already uh, within the next six months, uh, some planning for the next year, or you're not sure yet, or some of you don't have any plans either at the moment to migrate. So 
Thanks for getting back to us here and supporting the poll. Just keep it open for another five seconds. Take your chance and tick the box. Then I will show you the result here again to all of you. Okay, so thank you very much. And I show and display the results here. So yes, so there are, are a couple of you already thinking about, or I think in, in uh, really planning, more in planning, or probably already have set up uh, some next steps here within the next six months. A um, couple of you already planning, about 20% of audience here that tick the box are planning to do something in this kind of modernization within the next year. Uh, well, to be uh, honest, so most of you, 45% of all of those who have ticked the box are not sure yet. So uh, fully understandable. And I think it's a good opportunity today to get more uh, informed about the current situation with Oracle uh, reports and where to go to. And uh, that's exactly the target of today's session. So that we'll, we'll give you a bit more information and make you sure that uh, you go in the right direction. And for those who have no plans at all yet, think about, uh, we really can give you this information, uh, come back to us, join our session. We will be definitely happy to support you here in all of your requirements. Okay, so uh, thanks for the moment. And uh, what I would like to give back to you because you have supported us here in, 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 in these polls, uh, we have prepared a quick webinar special. Uh, just let me point out and, and emphasize uh, something that, that we would like to offer to you. First of all, uh, it's to know that this is available for attendees only for all of you out there who's joining today's session. So we offer a free, a free a quick check of Oracle reports to Jasper reports. So quite easy. Uh, what you can do, uh, you can uh, provide a selected five Oracle reports of your Oracle reports environment. Uh, you can register here for a quick check and um, you provide these uh, Oracle reports to us. What do we do? Uh, we take your reports, uh, we migrate those Oracle reports to Jasper reports. We will do a separate session uh, with you guys uh, individually. Uh, we show you how the migration will be performed tool-based uh, using the tool set, the reports replacer kit, and you will see your migration results uh, in Jasper based on your reports selected and provided to us. You can request this at pitsws.com slash webcast minus special. And again, this is unique only for attendees today. And uh, yeah, would be happy if you will take the opportunity and uh, get a more taste of uh, Jasper reports based on your real world Oracle reports. So at this point, uh, I, I would like to invite you now joining Peter, Peter Kopacz, uh, and he will uh, provide a, a deep inside view on the reports to Jasper based on uh, a couple of reports that you have provided before, some of you have provided before, and uh, take a look uh, and enjoy the session. Peter, go ahead, please. I stop my screen sharing. Yes, please. I'll try again. Okay, hi guys. Uh, like Sasha said, uh, <clears throat> some uh, guys uh, sent us some reports and we loaded the reports inside our report replacement kit repository. So we have here some reports loaded. And now I would like to show you how we can get from Oracle reports to the Jasper reports in few steps. So our tool will prepare the Jasper reports and check all the <coughs> objects inside the Oracle reports, data module layout and so on, and prepare the right uh, objects also inside the Jasper reports. So if we start with the first, first report, we just choose the report 
uh, here we have a few options. We can select one report. We can also cluster the system so we can use more reports or we can also use all reports at once and migrate that at once to the Jasper report structure. So I selected the one report and I will migrate this report to the Jasper report. So it was very quick as uh, one small report. We get the information about uh, migrated report in one row here with the report name, migration date time. Okay, it's not the current, but was done now. Uh, we get migrated report so Jasper version of the report. And we also get the TXT file where the log of this migration is prepared. The information about migration, you get also in the Apex environment. So here you get the summary of report objects uh, for data model, layout, and business logic. Then you get also information about generated objects inside the Jasper report environment. So the list of all objects prepared that which components should be updated manually. Uh, some formula columns or summary columns. List of non-converted, which is one formula was not converted. And if there you get also some migration warnings if something is not okay with Oracle reports. So all this information, which is shown in Apex uh, application for reports replace a kit, you get also in the text file for your documentation, uh, for your, I have to show that in another structure. So you get in your information about the locks also in the structured file so like I said, summary of reports, objects, what was done from the Oracle reports to the Jasper reports. Then all prepared objects for the Jasper. So very nice for your doc documentation if you need some. And which manual adjustments are needed for you in the Jasper tool then to do afterwards when this report is migrated. But like we said, at the end, you get also the downloaded Jasper report. This is automatically shown in the Jasper report tool in Jasper report studio. Okay, you now see the report which was prepared for with our report replacement uh, kit, but you will also now see the original Oracle uh, report. So inside of reports builder, now at the right side, you get the information about uh, this uh, report inside the reports builder. And that's the part which was then migrated to the uh, Jasper report. Like you see, the layout is nice and it's prepared 100%. You can We can also check the query. So one query was prepared. We can check that and we can also then look to the data model inside this report, which was migrated and we with the quick check, you can see that automatically and with migration tool, you get the information uh, also inside the data model for Jasper report. And that was prepared with our report replacement kit. So this was uh, migrated with our tool directly. So that's one of the reports which was sent for us. That's very simple report i think we have time to do one more uh, and i would like to show uh, this one that's a bit larger report and we will try to mm, migrate in this live demo also this one so i will try to migrate this report 
Okay, it's a bit larger, uh, but we have here. Again, you get information in the summary report object type uh, tab, uh, which data was prepared, what was migrated and what was not migrated. But at the end, we all would like to see what have our tool then prepared in the Jasper reports environment. So we just click here and then we can show this report layout. And like I said, this is the original one and this is the prepared automatically in a few seconds also inside the re Jasper reports environment. When we check the data model here, we have one, two, three, I think four queries and query four. And in Jasper reports, you get also the similar in another fashion, but also prepare the select statements with the right uh, stuff when selects and the right uh, variables also inside the Jasper report. If you go through the objects, you can also see in the layout prepared objects inside the Jasper reports, which are prepared automatically for you with our report replacement kit. So that are two examples of quick uh, Oracle reports to Jasper migration with our report replacement kit. And uh, that would be my part in the live demo, Sasha, you can then take over from here, please. Oh, Peter, fantastic. This was awesome. So you did this migration really uh, so fast. Uh, uh, just uh, only a few preparation as I, as I saw before. Uh, so uh, yeah, to all the audience, I can only emphasize uh, again, and uh, I would definitely uh, encourage you uh, take a quick, uh, quick view on, on, on our approach and on our webinar special. Um, Peter, probably uh, you can stop your screen sharing. Okay, if you have time, I can do one more, but not, well, if not. But uh, if you have, we still have time. I think we're good in time. Okay, Go then ahead. I would Go like to show also yeah. some, something in color because I have one more. Yeah, I do. Uh, the, last, the last report was sent from uh, the customer. I would like to show also that, that one. So it's this one. I will try to migrate. I tested that so <laughs> that I prepared for the live demo. So, uh, but we will generate that again. So it's a bit larger because a few seconds more to prepare that. And we, if we check this one, okay, I should open that. I think it's shown. Yeah, okay, it's shown in the back. Okay, if we check quickly now, also this one, you can see at the right, the very uh, detailed report with a lot of uh, frames and fields inside the Oracle uh, report uh, builder. And you can see the also this large and very intense with uh, layout with items. Uh, we can also then provide the right layout for that with the right structure. And yeah, all the frames, all the stuff inside and so on. So so also, uh, if you have a difficult reports and a lot of fields inside your environment uh, in the Oracle reports, uh, our tool can also provide uh, the solution for that and can also prepare the right layout, the right data model and all the objects which are necessary for the reports also to be shown inside the uh, Jasper reports. So 
that's the last one from me. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Probably you have another one. <laughs> yes, I have another one, but uh, I, I think that the time is. Uh... Uh, no, it's it's perfect. Thank you very much, Peter. That's that's fine. For okay, me. I will stop now the screen. Sorry. Okay, no problem. So it's very really interesting, and uh, it's really looking awesome, and and it's working. That's a nice thing. It's working, and it's it's proven, and it's trusted by projects that we have done. So again, uh, to all of you out there, uh, I would like to emphasize. Take the opportunity, we make your first steps towards Jasper reports easier. We can do this like Peter just demonstrated uh, based on a couple of your selected Oracle reports. You can uh, place a request at pitws.com slash webcast minus special and we would be more than happy to receive your requests and get in touch with you directly and support you. Well, uh, Stefan, uh, I saw already that you have answered most of the questions that came in during uh, the session. Yeah, I try, you... I try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so would you like to point out the one or the other, or uh, I think we will have a, a follow-up email so where we yeah. answer and, and show the That's questions right. and, and provide the answers yeah. as well. I like the level of questions, so wonderful. So they are uh, absolutely valid and very good. Um, we will cover them uh, in an email afterwards. Um, <clears throat> I try to answer as much as possible right now in the session. There's to be true one, which I'm not able to answer right now. I need some, some research, but I'm fine for this. Uh, we will uh, bring the result uh, later. Um, it's all about how the functionality, some license costs for Jasper, some integration questions, uh, some some capabilities of Jasper. So wonderful. So if, if there's any any question before or right now, just put it into the uh, uh, query and answer section of the chat. We will cover them either directly in the chat or afterwards. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so folks. Uh... Just to let you know that this webinar was exclusively for, for all attendees. Uh, there's a recording available only upon request. So if you uh, have this request, just drop me an email. Uh, in a follow-up, uh, we will provide to all attendees the poll results that you have seen here. Uh, and uh, we will invite you again to benefit from the webinar special and our expertise. So just to mention, uh, finally, that we had more than 100 registration with only few not attending, so which is incredible. So we know how important this topic is. And uh, well, we are here to help. So far, uh, so good. I think we are quite good in time. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed this webinar. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan, uh, Atna and Peter for your great presentations. Always good having you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Okay, so then at this point, let me out there thank you for your time. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting you. Have a great day wherever you are. Goodbye and uh, stay safe. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right. Thanks, Sasha. Bye. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. Bye.